Welcome to the Leaders Room. Today we have with us Anisha Shashindran, Chief Talent Officer for Groupon. Anisha, we're so excited to have you here with us. I love the story you have to tell around building a creative life. Before I get into some of those details, I'd like to know a little bit more about your creative life. I know you've worked at ISEC, yeah. and of course you're at Groupon. Tell me a little bit about what it is you did at what ISEC is and what it is you did there. All right. So ISEC is uh, the world's largest international youth not-for-profit. And uh, you know they are present in over like 110 countries and stuff like that. And and the tool that ISEC uses to impact the world is leadership development. So I was part of that uh, movement base, basically. And uh, well, I was in ISEC for about seven years. I did all sorts of stuff. I started from uh, entry level right up to uh, being part of the international headquarter uh, team. Uh, based in the Netherlands. Uh, so you started I, in university, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I Basically, my third week in university, I stumbled upon this booth called ISEC. was talking about business management, leadership development, and I was like, hmm, okay, interesting. So I joined, yeah. and it, it was the best decision I, I, I made. Yeah. So I, I've done all sorts of stuff in ISEC. I was doing sales. I was doing uh, talent management. I was doing recruitment. I did project management. And in the Netherlands, I was basically uh, working with uh, not for profit organizations and also like um, the UN agencies, European Union and all, to facilitate youth development, leadership development programs for uh, so young people. it's not people. just exchange programs. Yeah, the exchange program, yeah. the work abroad program is one of the main things that ISEC does, but mm -hmm. we also do other sort, uh, other things like uh, projects and conferences and stuff, yeah. Yeah, really, really. So what did it do for you? I mean, here you were a Malaysian girl growing up in Malaysia. Where were you at school, in Malaysia? Yeah, I, have, uh, I studied in Malaysia. Okay, yeah. and then you stumble across this international agency and it takes you to not just, you know, the Netherlands, but all over the place. You yeah. told me you've been to, what, 40 countries? Yeah, because of ISEC, ISEC yeah, because of ISEC, um, I, I developed this interest to travel and, and get to know different cultures and people and stuff. Yeah. And so I traveled to over 40 countries actually through ISEC. Do you have a favorite place that you've been? Oh, it's very tough. It's very tough to answer because, um, Every country is unique, yeah. and uh, I personally felt that uh, I loved Africa. Okay. I, f I loved Africa. It's just full of color and it's vibrant, and the people are really amazing. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, well. We'll talk more about that later. What about Groupon? What are you doing at Groupon? Okay, in Groupon, I, I basically lead people strategies. I look at how the business and people work together, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and and that kind of like uh, also entails me doing recruitment for Groupon, talent management, leading, uh, learning and development, and so on. Interesting. Now, I have to quote here okay. from an article I read about you in the New Straits Times. This was a while ago, so I don't yeah. know if you still agree with it, but. Mm -hmm. What you said in this article was, and I quote, I think Malaysian youth are highly capable, but they lack the courage to explore their options. They're unclear about their goals and allow their environments to influence their decisions. They're also comfortable where they are and do not want to go farther. Do you stand by this still? Is this some, still something that you're encountering when you're interviewing all those young people? To a large extent, I still do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think, uh, I think it's very... Um, normal in our society today because you know you, when you grow up your parents tell you okay you have three career options you know you either be a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer and okay and then when you're in school you need to be like great at what you do you need to be a great student you know and when you finish school you go to university you you get great grades and uh, after you finish uni immediately jump into a job or a career that can pay you well and that's mm -hmm. that's what you've been told since you were young, right? Right. And I think that's where like uh, a lot of uh, Asians or Malaysians in general fall into the uh, norm, right? That's normal mm -hmm. for them, and that's what they've been told, and that's what they will do. Yeah. Um, things like exploring or making mistakes isn't something that you know is very encouraged in our culture, yeah. because you're always punished if you make if you make a mistake. Punished. Yeah, punished. I mean, of course. how bad is it? Um, oh, okay. Uh, you 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 have the cane occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that bad? It's not. It's not. Uh, but there's disapproval. Yeah. So yeah. basically, mistakes are always perceived as a big no no. You know, yeah. in our society. So therefore, to kind of like, uh, uh, you know, basically just follow lah. Just follow what's normal. Just just do yeah. what's normal. And and normal means that don't go out of your comfort zone because then there's more you uh, higher make a mistake. Yeah, higher possibilities possibilities of making mistakes. So, I think that's where like uh, the mindset comes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for a lot of Asians or Malaysians in general because you just do what you've been told by your society or your family 
and then you'll be okay. Then yeah. you'll never be punished and, and you'll be happy, right? So I guess that's where like typically I find that uh, Asians are very, very followers in general, followers huh. in general. Huh. Though with the, the rise of the Gen Y community and all, I'm, I'm starting to see a little bit of difference in the way uh, Gen Ys think. And I think that um, I, I'm, I'm very happy to have found a couple of them to work with me in Groupon. So I'm curious, why do you think Gen Y is so different? Yeah. Is it their parents? Is it their, how they're being raised? Is it the internet? Are they getting more chance to travel? Are they reading different things? What's mm -hmm. going on with these guys? Yeah, I think it's a couple of things. It's definitely yeah. the way that they've been brought up by their parents. Yeah. Uh, technology has played a very big uh, part in, in uh, again, you know, making sure that communication is, is, is reachable anywhere and uh, information is shared very, very easily. So um, when I was working in the Netherlands, I realized that, you know, when you reach the age of 18, people actually take, a, take time off school to go and travel, mm -hmm. you know. I, was, I found this really interesting because yeah. in Malaysia, there's no such thing. There's no way you leave No gap school. year. Yeah, you don't have gap years. You, there's, it's just a process, one after another. Yeah. But now, because of Facebook and all, you, you get to see a lot of different information, sharing of experiences, where um, I feel now Gen Ys are a little bit more uh, knowledgeable and, and they're open to kind of like this kind of information, knowing yeah. like, hey, there's this, this, this person, same age, you know, in the Netherlands who's, who's traveling a year after school, right? Yeah. Why, why can't I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, um, you know, now everyone can fly, so uh, uh, flying isn't that expensive anymore. Thank so you, AirAsia, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> so I think all these factors have, uh, you know, directly and indirectly shaped the way Gen Ys uh, are thinking more yeah. and more, and I like that way of thinking. Basically. Do you think that they are more interested in pursuing their own interests, sort of learning about themselves and saying, you know, hey, I, I like, maybe I've had this experience or maybe I've just read on Facebook about somebody else's experience, but wow, that appeals to me. And suddenly these dreams my parents had for me, they're, mm -hmm. they're fading away. They're no yeah. longer relevant. Yeah. Uh, to a certain extent, uh, I, I mean, I, to be frank, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, people that I know in the Asian uh, community, they're very respectful to what their parents uh, you know, ha want for them or envision for them. And I think that even for myself, I mean, I'm raised up in a very traditional family where uh, my parents told me what I need to do and what I need to be when I grow up, right? And I have a lot of respect to my parents because I'm, I, I'm everything that I am because of them. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also making the people that mean the most to you understand and, and, and see what you would like to kind of shape up for yourself. Yeah. So I think uh, Asian or uh, Malaysian youth are very, very respectful and they will follow whatever that uh, parents want for them. Yeah. But there's also somewhat a negotiation experience that's happening at this point of time where um, um, even in my family, you know, I told my parents, okay, I'm, after university, I'm going to work for a not-for-profit. I'm going to earn 850 ringgit a month. Uh, but just allow me to do this for three years just three years and see what becomes from that, right? Yeah. And so that there was a negotiation process where... And so they were probably not too happy with that. Weren't too happy. I mean, right. they spent quite a bit for my education and then, yeah. you know, the returns was just 850 ringgit a month, which yeah. which is not very typical again, right? But again, I wanted them to to know that this meant a lot for me because I'm a, I'm a biotechnologist by yeah. uh, qualification. But I know my passion is, is, is more in people development, leadership development, business management and stuff. And if I don't venture into this experience at this point of time, then I may never be able to do that later. You yeah. know, so it, I, I tried to, you know, uh, share with them what I wanted for myself and also negotiated a timeline. So if things yeah. don't work out, at least I know that, okay, I did my best within these three years and now I, I can venture into something that uh, maybe it's normal or what they want from me and stuff like that. But my three years turned out to be great, so. That's great. Yeah. So what advice would you give to other Malaysian mm -hmm. youth? Okay. Uh, you know, Gen Y, mm -hmm. people in their teens and 20s. Yeah. Um, if they sort of catch wind that they, they can actually do things a little bit differently. Yeah. What advice would you give to them to first of all perhaps figure out what it is they'd like to do and then to actually be able to do it? Yeah, so Nike's gonna love me for this, but okay. I really think you just should do it. Just do it, you yeah. know, like whatever you want to um, try for yourself or experience, just do it. My theory is I never want to live my life asking what if, mm. you know, so if you have that that curiosity or that interest, then just do it, you know? And, and when you do it, 
if you if you venture into something, you give your 110 percent, not 99 percent, not 100 percent. I mean, even in Groupon, uh, we 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 are very ambitious as a team, mm -hmm. and we know that if we don't give our 100 and 10 percent attention and focus and hard work, we're not going to get there. Yeah. You get what I mean? So like, yeah. I think it is very important for someone to to have that that determination and courage to give everything that they have in order for them for them to succeed. That's great. You know, yeah. there's a there's a study or not a study done a, a book written recently by a palliative care nurse, somebody who looked who spends time with people in their very last days on okay. earth. Mm -hmm. And she wrote a book called The Five Regrets of the Dying. Oh, I see. And actually the number one regret was that they didn't live the life that they were meant to lead, that they that they gave in too much to other people's desires for them, yeah. whether it's a career or family or whatever. Yeah. And it's a wonderful thing to learn that so young because you won't fall into that trap. Yeah. yeah. I, I always wanted to write my own story, so yeah, that's that's what kind of like pushed me to to just give my all best. Yeah. And uh, I made a lot of mistakes. I went through a lot of challenges, but... What was your biggest mistake? Well, my biggest mistake is probably um, uh, doing biotechnology. Uh, yeah. I mean, studying that course. I think I, I, I enjoyed my years in university, and I think that, um, I again, it, it kind of shaped me to the person I am today. Mm -hmm. But it's just that at that point of time, perhaps I lacked the courage to, to uh, you know, venture into something that I was not comfortable. Really, yeah. I would have probably done better if I, not better, and I, I would have, uh, it would have been a little bit more interesting and, and complementing my interests if I studied something really, uh, maybe people development or business management. Psychology or something like that. I, I'm, I'm very glad I minored in psychology, uh -huh, so that was uh -huh. like a, a big thing for me. But it's just that uh, as much as I love whatever I learned in biotechnology, uh -huh. But it's just that it doesn't. It's not it just, as directly related to what you're actually doing. Yeah, and and it just doesn't bring out the best in me, you mm -hmm. know, like in mm -hmm. in my actions, in my thoughts, and and my energy and stuff like right. that. So yeah. if I could, I mean, that was perhaps a mistake. But I love mistakes because mistakes have been my yeah. greatest teachers in life. So that's good. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that Malaysian youth, uh, you know, have a little something to learn. Like they could be urged to be sort of open up and be a little more innovative and creative around yeah. their own life. Mm -hmm. In all that work that you did at ISEC, mm -hmm. uh, or perhaps even at Groupon, when you're traveling around the 40 different countries and you're meeting all these people and you're going to conferences and you're involved with the UN, yeah. uh, is there any particular culture that you would characterize as being that more open place where you look at the kids coming out and they, and they are very you know, mm -hmm. charging ahead into the world? Maybe they don't mm -hmm. know what they're doing, but at least they've got the energy and they're, yeah. and they're open to it. Is there a, would you characterize any place like that? Um, Generally, um, I think I think uh, I spent quite a bit of time in, in Europe, and just just working with these guys, I feel that the European youth are pretty much what you've just described. Huh. Um, they may not ha know everything, but then again, they are bold. They are bold to go and find out the answers. They are yeah. bold to go and experiment and explore. And I think I, I really like that kind of attitude and energy. Because eventually, if you're, you just need the right attitude. You know, you yeah. don't, people don't judge you from where you come from or your skill sets and stuff, but it's more of your attitude that, that kind of like drives you to become yeah. Gr yeah. great. And I think that the European youth is, I mean, something that I admired about them. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm very curious. You're interested in this topic of leadership. You are a leader in Groupon. You've got all these high energy, creative, independently minded, 110% uh, energy people. What, what are the implications for leadership? What's it like to be leading people who are like that versus the more traditional workforce, which is basically saying, hey, tell me what to do and I'll go do it? Yeah, all right. Well, I always, uh, I'm very proud to say this. I say, um, you know, we are a team of rebels, young mm -hmm. Gen Y rebels. Uh, we're proud to be that because we are rebels that want to work and build one of the fastest growing companies in Malaysia. You know, so. We always channel our Gen Y energy in a positive way. And but how exactly do you do that? How do you get that direction, that, yeah. that focus? I think a couple of things. We're very stringent with hiring, as you can see. 4,500 people, we've offered over 200. We're very, very stringent with hiring. And when we hire, at every stage of their recruitment process, we're very, very transparent as to what to expect 
if they join a company like ours. Mm -hmm. So unlike typical companies that tell you, hey, join us because of this, 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 I usually find myself saying, don't join us because of this, this, this. You know, yeah. So I make it very, very transparent. I set the right expectations from their first interview right up to their final yeah. uh, interview. Because you're looking for fit. If yeah, there's no good exactly. fit, it doesn't matter. I always Why would I be trying to trick you into coming here exactly. and then have you not work out? It's just like getting into a relationship, right? You mm -hmm. want to start on the right note, and to start on the right note means that you have the you have very clear expectations of what to expect or what not to expect. So, um, I, I, I mean, working with GenWise, um, I feel that this is something that companies must do, and, and we do it quite well. We set the right expectations. If you're looking for this, don't join us. If you're looking for that, then maybe group on is your place yeah, yeah. and I think that's one and and recently we also got um, uh, we were nominated by uh, world blue as one of the most democratic workplaces how so so what do you do that's so democratic um, yeah exactly so actually we, we entered this competition um, only because we wanted to evaluate whether or not you know truly we, we are a democratic mm -hmm. workplace and um, and when we were one of the top 50s, we were very happy to know that. Um, and I started to think a little bit more, okay, so Is what are we doing? top 50 in Malaysia? No, globally. Globally? Globally, we we're, were one of the top 50 okay. uh, most democratic workplaces. And I, I think that there are a couple of things that uh, you know, I would associate to being democratic. And one is we listen. Yeah. It's not just about giving people the space to just talk and make decisions, but we listen. Yeah. And we're very um, you know, strategic with our listening. So we welcome all ideas. Um, we have several platforms. We have uh, anonymous platforms where people can tell us what they are not happy about or mm -hmm. their suggestions and ideas. Uh, but in Groupon, I find people a little bit more vocal, so they're very comfortable with coming up we have well, if you're listening, they're going to be more vocal. Yeah, yeah. It's a benevolent cycle, e exactly. right? Exactly. And we yeah. have opened up policies where, you know, there's no hierarchy or structure who you can communicate with. Right. So they just come up and tell you their, their challenges or their ideas and concerns, and we listen. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, like, uh, there are three types of things that we do when we listen. So that when we receive ideas, there are ideas that are brilliant and we can do immediately. Then we tell them, thank you so much. This is something that we're going to do. And we always update them, you know, when we're going to... Do, the, uh, do what, what their suggestion was. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes ideas or suggestions are not something that we can do now because of circumstance of the business and, and right. where we are and stuff like that. Timing. So then we, we tell them that, hey, this is a great idea, may not be able to do it now, but definitely something that we're going to look at. And eventually when we kind of like, you know, open the idea again, we always keep this person in the loop so that he or she feels really happy that he has contributed to the business. Right. Sometimes, I mean, when it comes to democracy, it's, yeah, listening is a big part of it, but that doesn't mean blindly just listening and doing whatever people right. want. So, so sometimes you have, sometimes you have to say, "Great idea, can't use it." Can't can't use it, but or we not always even a good idea. we're very very clear to explain why. Yeah, you know, and Gen Ys love that. Gen Ys yeah. love it. Like, okay, I've said it, but then um, there's also an explanation why it can't be done. Yeah. So that's another thing. We we really love uh, you know being this democratic uh, company, and another thing that supports uh, this this. Um, tool yeah, mm -hmm. is being, I mean, the culture of Groupon itself. We're very, very open. Everybody sits together with everyone. There's no leadership room or cubicle and, yeah, and, and No stuff giant like that. office in the corner and everybody no. else is in the yeah. in their cubes. Yeah, Definitely not. So to experience yeah. hires, I always ask them this. Do you want to sit in a room specifically? Because if you are looking for some th something like that, then don't join Groupon. Because yeah. we like to keep it very, very open. We want to... Informal. I mean, I see the people walking around. It's, yeah. The dress is very informal. Yeah. It, something else I saw that I thought was interesting. I saw your hours posted, which are 10 to 7. Yeah. So what's behind that? Yeah, so I think, well, generally, anyone, uh, people can come to Groupon anytime between 8 to, to 10. Uh -huh. So if you come at 8, generally, you go back at 5, 9, 6. But 10 is kind of like the latest someone yeah, can come yeah, in. Yeah. And, well, why we have, you know, these, these flexible hours of 8 to 10 and then 5 to 7 is only because we've come to a point where, uh, you know, Gen Ys, again, love work-life balance and yeah, stuff. And yeah. we don't want to keep hours and flexibility, that, just yeah. having the freedom to choose. Exactly. And also avoid the traffic. I was looking at that saying, that's <laughs> fantastic. You're helping KL, actually, by <laughs> taking some of the pressure off. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And, and I, I like this. And I know all my, my, my people work more than what they're required to. Yeah. And uh, so we're not very nitty-picky with the hours. But for us, we still have... We still have, uh, you know, that that ten to seven notification only because we look at uh, timing as a sen as a sign of respect. Yeah. Yeah. So we so still. So you don't have want them here till ten at night. Oh, we don't want. Actually, in fact, sometimes I'm getting people to go back earlier. Yeah. Yeah, but respect you know, for their personal life, respect for their human life. Exactly. But yeah. generalize these days, if you give them, you know, that big sense of ownership, 
Uh, yeah. they, they, they hold on strong to whatever they're responsible for. Yeah. And uh, this is something that I'm very proud to be working with yeah. some of the best Gen Ys that I've seen yeah. so far. So respect for the individual. It's uh, wonderful that you're doing that for Gen Y, but I have to say it's something everyone should get. So anyway, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful talking to you. And uh, I have great respect for what you're doing and uh, appreciate bringing out your ideas into the leaders' room. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for joining us in the leaders' room. It's a wrap. <laughs>